What year did you meet Ron and Valerie Taylor, John? Oh, I always say back in uh, about 1959, uh, 60, when I was uh, started in the Allum and Shield competitions, particularly, uh, and going up to the uh, Pacific Coast Championships and uh, mostly Allum and Shields, uh, and, and involved with Ted Louie. And I was, uh, ended up um, marrying Ted's one of his twin daughters and uh, um, became part of the family of, of his associates and his uh, boatload of uh, spearfishing divers. As far as uh, deep bells, what's the deepest a bell's been recovered uh, from to, in Australia? To my knowledge, I would say the Burstgrove Park Bell, about 170 feet down. I'm not certain about that in the metres. And what, uh, who was the diver? Uh, I believe it might have been Ken Bateman. Right, and what would that bell be worth today? Well, I, I, someone tried to sell it for $5,000, but I would say it'd be maybe $1,000. Good. About $1,000. John, could you tell me how many bells have been recovered nationally around Australia? Well, I, I would probably say, simply, without great knowledge, 50 to 100 in that order. Uh, there's uh, probably a whole lot hidden away. And in New South Wales? Oh, uh, probably at least 25, maybe 30. Okay, well, say, do you know which state has, has, where, which state has recovered the most? Queensland or maybe? I think Victoria might be. Why particularly Victoria? Well, they had a lot of shipwrecks there and even a submarine belt has been recovered there. How about but, but Western Australia? Yeah, what would be the prettiest of all ship's bells that have been found? Oh, I, I just have my favourite on base of the form. What's so good about it? Well, it's, it's complete. It's got its frame and holds it up and it, it function, functions properly. And where is it? Where is it located? At, at Ballina. And privately owned or in a yes, museum? privately owned. Oh, and what would be the value of that? I would say about $2,000 would be pretty right. So the fawn at Ballina takes your... Fancy. Right. John, what's the largest bell that's ever been recorded and found? I think I would believe what I've seen was the Malabar bell by John Jacobs. Uh, it's a really big, heavy one and it's barely able to lift it off the Malabar. And what metal are all these, I mean, are all, are all these bells are made from one particular metal and is that, does it depend on the, what metal it is as to the value of it? No, it's the, the background of the history of the vessel it came from. Uh, how well known it was, and the, let's say size of it, and um, the effort that went into getting it properly. But how about what what metal it is? I mean, if it's brass, if it's you know has silver in it. No, it's all you just say bronze bells. There, it's like the bronze cannons. Uh, Non-ferrous metal it is. It's not a steel or iron. It's uh, brass, uh, copper mixture which is, um, can survive seawater use. The, uh, the bell from the Emden, what was the Emden? That, that was a German uh, um, ship that was um, um, sunk by an Australian warship uh, over in the West Australian coastline and uh, uh, it was then up uh, on fire and, and, and drifted up onto, or ran up onto North Keeling Island and is still there today, 95 years ago. That's what I was going to ask, First World War. Yes. Right. John, the Dunbar, could you give me some information about that? When was that wrecked? Well, that happened, well, the Dunbar happened in, uh, on the night of, uh, well, the morning, early morning, 21st of August, 1857, at the uh, south of the, south of the Gap. On uh, South Edison Sydney Harbour, and there were 121 lives lost, passengers and all crew, and uh, with one su sole survivor, uh, James Johnson. Uh, and uh, what year was that discovered? Well, about the uh, 1950s, uh, uh, Lois and uh, Don Linklater were involved in, uh, and with Wally Gibbons uh, driving on the area and located the uh, remains and 
collected different items of it. Was there any treasure? Well, there's personal possessions, really, a whole lot of sovereigns and they had gold coins in those days, were treasured by a lot of people. Worth of Who was John Gillies? And, well, John Gillies, he was a professional fisherman and, and a constant uh, spear fisherman diver and uh, he mixed his dive, fishing activities and when he had time he'd go to where the Dunbar wreck was and he got a lot of re remains from there of the uh, artifacts of uh, per private possessions and, and uh, household goods and bits and pieces of the vessel and he had a vast collection of probably 10,000 items. Oh, and where did this end up? I mean, who eventually received this? The uh, Australian Maritime Museum at Darling Harbour apparently acquired them. There hasn't been any notification of value, but he, he, he was apparently was wanting to auction them, and uh, they decided to buy them and took them off him before he died. John, who found the Yomagala though? Uh, that was found by Wally Gimmins uh, when he was diving with, uh, with Ben Croft, and uh, he, he was it was unrecognisable as a bill, it was just a conglomeration of growth over it and, and Wally recognised it as a shape of a bell and, and brought it up the surface. John, where was this, is this bell now? Well, after it was cleaned up and it was uh, uh, sold to the uh, Maritime Museum, Museum at Townsville. Well, associates in the, on their display there, yeah. associated with the um, Shipwrecks. Uh, I became interested in postcards because that had a photograph of a shipwreck on the shore, and um, uh, and from that then I was one thing I always missed out on doing was getting a bell off a shipwreck myself, and I don't even have a bell off a shipwreck, but but it's nice to have had a bell I'd recovered. Uh, that was supposed to be so. John. This this porthole. What? What's the story? Tell me a little bit about it. What's the story behind it? Well, well, well you're incorrect. It's not. A, Porthole. It's, it's not a porthole. It's a scuttle. That's the correct terminology for this window in a ship, and that's what it should be called. And a navy person will always tell you this for sure. And that, uh, very prized from divers because there's quite a quantity of them on a lot of shipwrecks in the older days, and they're collected by them. But not there's only one bell on each ship sometimes. Approximately. And uh, any uh, success this trip uh, north? I've collected uh, one photograph of Bell, and uh, I've been told where another one is, and, uh, and also received a photograph of Bell that I didn't realise my friend had at Coffs Harbour and from the Dunbar. Very good.